Picture a big and complex construction site. There are people everywhere and dozens of work sections. Resources and plant are constantly moving in and out. And in short, there's a lot going on. To manage all that chaos, you need planning and organization. You need structured meetings with access to visual aids, scheduling tools, site maps, and a few creature comforts as well. Somewhere where you can think properly and you can hear each other clearly. You need a war room. Hi everyone, I'm Olu from Apex, the fastest way for construction teams to plan together. In this video, we're going to be talking about what a war room is and how to set one up for maximum productivity. As always, we recommend watching the full video so you can get the most out of it. But if you want to skip to a particular section, you can do so by clicking on the timestamp bar at the bottom of the screen. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you never miss a video and we get the validation of watching numbers go up on a screen. So what is a war room you ask? Well, think of it like a shared command center that different teams and stakeholders can meet. As I mentioned a second ago, construction projects can feel a little manic. So it helps to have a designated place where teams can collaborate and get to work on their battle plans. War rooms aren't a new idea. And if you've been in construction management for a while, then you've probably seen your fair share of them. They're usually just a big meeting room decorated with printed site maps, schedules, and running lists of planned tasks or shifts. So how do you go about building a great war room? Well, we've broken that down into four sections. Let's start with the space itself. War room setups can differ from project to project as physical constraints, team sizes, and budgets can vary. That being said, some things are non-negotiable. Think about the room itself. Picking the right space to set up your room is essential. In an ideal world, you'd have a large spacious room with luxurious sofas, coffee machines, heating, aircon, and endless snacks. We can all dream, right? In reality, just asking yourself a few simple questions can make a big difference. Is the room well sheltered? Is there enough space for everyone attending the meeting? Is there enough space for the equipment required? Can you tie up the room for long periods of time? Think weeks and months, depending on the project. And does it have, or can you set up power and Wi-Fi? All these things are essential to setting up a room the right way. Next, think about your acquired provisions and nice to haves. The required stuff is physical equipment needed to make manage and display site plans. Think whiteboards, chairs, power, Wi-Fi, and stationery. If you're working on a larger project, then television screens, monitors, and projectors are commonly considered necessities as well. In addition to the essentials, consider the things that might improve workflow, stimulate better planning, and make the team members more comfortable. Having free snacks and hot drinks is great, but if you've got the budget, then consider improving your equipment. 360 degree projectors, remote working whiteboards and interactive displays like the ones from Mission Room are a great place to start. These tools help you visualize your plan at scale and help the whole team collaborate together. Now that you've got all the tangible stuff out of the way, it's time to consider a few rules of engagement. To help keep your meetings running smoothly, it might be a good idea to put a few war room rules in place, print them out and then pin them up for all to see. These should help set the room's tone and get everyone in the room to contribute productively. Potential rules and notices could include things like one person speaks at a time, making it clear that everyone's opinion counts or reminders not to remove other people's plans. Also consider notices that might encourage ideas and engagement. One example might be to hang a sign that says, if you have an idea after the meeting, send it to jondo at email.com by 5 p.m. Not everyone is comfortable with making suggestions in a room full of people, and this might encourage ideas from more introverted team members. Finally, it's time to go to war. It's no good just having a war room. You need to put it to good use as well. Think about setting a routine, an agenda, and having someone take meeting notes. Then think about the visual aids and planning tools that you're going to use. In the past, the only way to manage plans 
has been to keep scrappy notes, send various messages via different channels, and hold countless meetings that take up too much time and drain teams of their energy. Fortunately, with construction scheduling software like Aphex, these tasks can be managed and openly communicated much more efficiently. And that's it. So, war rooms, huh? What are they good for? Well, with your war room set up and the right strategy in place, you're now ready to go forward and conquer. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video. Three hundred and sixty degree projectors. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same bit that you. <laughs> I really struggled with that. <laughs>